What is going on, family? Coming to you in 4K. That's not a K. Anyways, 4K. Let's do this. Okay, so let's talk about proper AT&T residential gateway placement. All right, you just got to your new home. Uh, you're going to call at and to, to set up your system, and you're like, you know what, honey, uh, let's talk about this. Let's see what the best placement for it is. I have an office that's in the front, our theater room is in the back, the kids' rooms are on this side of the house, our master bed is over here, and I got a shed in the back that I like to hang out. Is where, where should I put the gateway at? Should I be worried more about my business? Should I be worried about my entertainment? Should I be worried about my children? Should I be worried about um, the, the master room? Or should I be worried about my shed in the back where I hang out and have fun? You, you ain't got to worry about all that. AT&T has extenders, air ties, mesh system. You can get five of these on one account. The proper placement for a gateway is going to matter, of course, what is more important to you. So let's say we have a square home. Straight in the middle is going to be the best spot for your gateway. All right. Let's say you have a no shape home. Okay. You're going to want to place the gateway here on this L because it's going to get Wi-Fi up here in these rooms and the Wi-Fi over here in these rooms. If you have a ranch style home center, every single gateway should be in the center. Now at that point, that is where these extenders come into play because your gateway is only going to cover so much. All right. Um, and I'm talking about anything above 2,500 square feet. All right. So with the 20, under 2,500 square feet, this is gonna be just fine for the inside of the home. Now, if you have security cameras outside the houses and all that good stuff, you're gonna to wanna to get at least one or two extenders. But let's say you do have that room where office is over here, master's over here, kids room's over here, and the theater room's back here in the back, and you got your cool shed in the back where you play pool and poker at. Well, here's what you're gonna do, hopefully, your home is built with Cat5 or Cat6 wiring that you can backfeed your equipment by plugging it into these ports here or on the 210 ports here or your hardwire these devices. Now, I'm not 100% sure exactly how many you can put on wireless on AT&T, but from my experience with working some of these guys at AT&T, I know that three can be on Wi-Fi and the other two have to be hardwired. Preferably you want to hardwire all five of them with a, like a gigabit switch or something like that. And most homes already have wiring placed in the home. So yes, center is going to be the best spot, air ties all over the place. And you'll want to use a smart home manager app to determine where the best placement is going to be for your residential gateway and I mean your extenders more than your residential gateway. Now, the at t technician is going to be there. He's going to be, he or she's going to be trying to take care of business as much as possible. Work with the character, character, work with the guy or girl. He's a, they're pretty cool characters. I, I work with a lot of them. They're, they're really good people, okay? Work with them as much as possible. They're going to help you out. They're going to try to get the best pop possible. Um, some rooms are undroppable. Uh, company I work with, um, they got some really good cool, cool tools that they can push down. I know AT&T guys have some really cool tools. They got those like magna poles and glow rods and they can get them in certain areas. Now, if you have a ceiling that does this for some reason, it's not going to happen. You might just put it on top of that ceiling or find another room somewhere. Uh, I've seen some of those in my little side job that I have, but um, the proper placement is always going to be in the center. Now, if you have an apartment uh, or a small home, and I don't mean small because my home's 2,000 square feet, so the only thing I live in a mansion or a tiny little home, and it's a basic home. My gateway is still in the center, but for the longest time, I had it in the master bedroom because I didn't want the kids to go and push buttons and start turning it off. They're a little bit older now, so I place in the center of the house, okay? Um, and in this shed that's probably about 20 feet away from my gateway, um, I did run some Cat6 to this room and I did hardwire this device to it. And then my daughter's room has another one and then in the master bedroom we have another one. So we have a full 360 degree Wi-Fi for the entire house. And it is good for security cameras. 
Um, I got, I'm, I'm working on putting a fire pit in the back of my back of my lot, which is about 100 feet back from where the residential gateway is at. But the air ties that I have in this shed reaches that far because this is just a wood shed. There's nothing fancy to it. Um, that's something else I'm probably going to talk about in another video is what hurts Wi-Fi the most. But right now, we're just looking at proper placement center of the house. Uh, a quick tip and bonus if you made it this far in the video, do not put these gateways in a cabinet. It doesn't do anything. You want to have it exposed. That's why AT&T has made them real nice, sleek, and pretty and stuff. These aren't, these aren't bad looking either, but there's a bunch of green lights on that and stuff. So AT&T went more sleekness. So this one is super, super sleek. There's only one button, one LED right down here that lights up. So it keeps it real nice and pretty to the home. You want to expose it versus hiding it. Now, if you don't want AT&T's residential gateway, then what you can do is buy third-party routers. You still need this as the modem, but you end up plugging port one, this is a bonus, port one to the uh, to your Eero or your Orbi, and then you place those other ones strategic places. But you still need this as the main modem. That's why it's called a residential gateway, because it's the gateway to everything for your home. So I hope this little six and a half minute video helped out and it wasn't too informative or too too much because people tell me I'm too much sometimes. But I like to talk. I like to give a lot of information out. All right. Thank you guys very, very much. We'll see you in the next one.